Create your pathway. Hey friends, welcome back to the Create Your Pathway podcast. I am Rory, I'm your host. I'm here to interview real people in real jobs so you can know what they're really like. And today I'm talking to Miranda Garrison and Mantario Green who are engineers that work with MTD products. Most of the things that you see in the world from ways that we get around to buildings to products that we use, there's an engineer somewhere in the background helping to design that thing. Now for this video, Mantario and Miranda, they're both engineers but they represent slightly different kinds of engineering. Mantario works more directly with products and Miranda actually actually engineers the people side of the company she works at. So she's responsible for helping teams be stronger and flourish, and that's actually a kind of engineering. The other cool thing about this interview is that at the time that I filmed it, Mantario had only been working at MTD for a very short amount of time, and Miranda had been there for a while. So they get to share different perspectives at working at the same place. Engineers show up in a lot of different places and do a lot of really cool things. Let's hear about some of that now. Hey, Mantario, Miranda, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Glad to be here. Yeah, glad to be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, so why don't you begin by telling me like your roles or, or titles, whichever you'd like, and then like tell us more about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Okay. Wanna go first? Sure, I'll okay. go first. Um, so my name is Miranda Garrison. I am a continuous improvement engineer at MTD Products. And on a day-to-day -day basis, um, main thing I work on is, is projects that uh, focus on process improvements and saving money for the company. Okay. I'll you know analyze our data and see what do we actually need to be focusing on so we're not wasting our time. <laughs> so we're focused on exact project that we need to to, to save our company money or waste. Yeah. And from there, um, I'll work with my group and we'll create improvement teams. And then um, I may train those teams. My job, my function is basically to lead and motivate the teams yeah. as they're making the improvements. Yeah, and um, what, what products do you all make? So we make walk behind lawnmowers and um, mm. tillers, some of our lawn and garden uh, equipment um, here at Chupelo, Mississippi. Yeah. Um, our company also makes zero turns and tractor mowers, but that's at our Martin, Tennessee plant. Okay. Yeah. So there's a plant here. Yeah. yeah. You say snow blowers? We have to say we need those so much here in Mississippi. Obviously. <laughs> so there's a plant here, there's a plant here, and there's a plant in Tennessee. Are those the two plants? No, we also have a plant in Willard, Ohio, and in Nogales, Mexico. Okay. okay. And um, we also have some functions in uh, Europe. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So, Miranda, it sounds like your role has to do a lot with leading people and working with people and teams. Mentaria, what about you? Um, me, I'm an electrical engineer here at MTD, and my roles or functions here is mainly um, updating the actual machines throughout the plant. Um, sometimes mechanical or even chemical, like we have a wastewater system. Um, I didn't personally install it, but like when things go down, we go check on them, make sure it's back up to running. And um, with our electrical techs and our maintenance men, we also work with them from day to day basis, you know, as because here with our engineering group throughout the whole facility, we're technically a team. You know, even though we're in engineering, we all work together, you know, alongside a lot alongside them for any purposes of things breaking down, electrical, mechanical. It's just what our, my main function is we make sure our product and machines are running up to par day by day. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. outside of that, what I tend to do is we, like she said, projects, um, whether that's installing new projects or updating projects related to POC, um, electrical drawings, things of that nature. <laughs> okay. And how long have each of you been with MTD? I've been here nine years. Okay. And I've been here three, <laughs> <laughs> three months. <laughs> three months. <laughs> I just Man. started, yes, sir. I just started. Yeah. <laughs> We're so throw obviously, them out there. <laughs> maybe, yeah. So, I mean, let's maybe, Mentario, let me start with you this time. You know, obviously, students watching this, one of the things on their minds is, how do I get where you are? You know, they may be interested. Can you tell me a little bit about, since you're so fresh, you know, on the job, what was your path like to get there? I would love to tell you. Uh, absolutely. What I would suggest for most people is, um, I know it's a little different for some people. What I, what I personally did, I went to a junior college first. That way, it gave me the time I wanted to dictate and decide on what did I really want to do. Yeah, you know, stars. I uh, I knew I wanted to do something technical, personally, uh, related to engineering. When I first started at uh, ICC in uh, Fulton, Mississippi, yeah, I started off as a computer engineer, and um, that that's perfect. I know I'm electrical right now, but that's it. Really sets you up for prepping. Okay, 
what do I really want to do? Because when you get to senior level and you really dictate when you finally make it there, the next big thing is what I highly suggest to most people when I change my major to electrical is it ain't about just knowing your major. Start thinking a little bit in depth of, for like, take for me, for instance, in electrical engineering, you got power. You know, people who work on tran uh, transformers on the coast doing, you know, transmission lines. There's um, manufacturing engineers, kind of like what I am. There's design engineers that draw schematics on an industrial level for plants and different things like that. So when you really get to that level um, in senior college, really think about not just your major, but what type of, it ain't about the title, but in depth, what do you want to be happy doing from day to day? <laughs> yeah. And I love your point about going to junior college. Did you go to ICC? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people I, in, in these conversations, a lot of people have started ICC. I've got a lot of friends that started at ICC and it's just such a great thing. Like you, you don't have to know where you're going to go forever. And four year mm -hmm. college is a pretty steep investment for a lot of people. If you're not really sure what you're going to do, mm -hmm. ICC will give you that foundation and give you a little bit of space to like mm -hmm. constructively figure that out. So yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, Miranda, what about you? So you're, you know, same company, very different role. You're not an electrical engineer, right? So how did, what's the pathway that, that got you into, you know, leading people and leading teams in a context of a, of a company like MTD? Okay. So when I started out in college, I actually went to junior college first. I went to Northeast. Okay. Um, and I agree with y'all. It's the perfect stepping stone to going into a senior level college. Mm -hmm. um, I was majoring in math and I knew I loved math. I'd always loved math and seeing how things were made and everything. But I, yeah. you know, even then I knew I did not want to be a teacher. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because I had, um, most of my family were teachers and mm -hmm. it just didn't feel right for me. And, you know, the only thing, honestly, the only thing I really knew about engineering up until that point was that it was a predominantly male field. You know, I didn't think, you know, oh, there's not that many women in that. I ain't, you know, ain't going to worry about that. And, um, <laughs> but one day when I was at Northeast, we had a group from Mississippi State of industrial engineers. That's my major, industrial engineering. They came and they talked to us about the career, you know, and I got really excited about it. I thought, you know, what, that's exactly what I think I want to do. And what was so cool about it was that there were women in the group, too. You know, I kind of thought, hey, they can do it. I can do it, too. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing holding me back from, from joining and becoming an engineer. So that's kind of what led me to where I am today. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so maybe let's think about now, um, Miranda, we'll stay with you for a moment. So you, I imagine that you've progressed to where you are now inside the company. Like you didn't start at the role that you're in now. No, I did. You did. See, I worked, okay. I worked at another company previous to, to work in the MTD. Okay. Um, previous company, I worked as an industrial engineer and here, um, I worked as a start as a continuous improvement engineer and, and technically I'm a continuous improvement supervisor now. So, I get to manage more more people and labor from day to day. So. Okay, so maybe Miranda, tell me, like, what are some of the things that you particularly enjoy about your role? Well, I really, I always love. They call industrial engineering the people engineer. Um, I love working with people. I, you know, there's a lot of different personalities out there, and you know, you have to try to find the the best way to approach people. Um, but that's something I've enjoyed doing since I was a kid. You know making friends and influencing people <laughs> is the book that we read. And, um, you know, I just, I love leading teams. I love making improvements. When we do something that makes a difference to our people out there on the floor, our hourly workers, it makes their lives easier and better. I mean, that to me gives me, you know, purpose. That means that we're doing what we, what we're meant to do. So if you're interested in any engineering, really, in my opinion, uh, you want to focus on your math, your science, your communication, Okay. Uh, classes and skills, um, you know, yeah. really from there, you, in yeah. my opinion, I mean, that's what you really want to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it sounds like for you though, there's, it's not just about the hard skills. There's also the so-called soft skills of being able to there work are. with a team, cast vision, lead people. Yes. And I'm sure yeah. Material, you would say too, like your ability to communicate just because you're yeah, working on technical stuff, the communication is yeah, still very really important for you too, right? Okay. It goes, communication goes a long way because I'm all the time talking with contractors. You know, I'm on the phone with distributors. You know, sometimes we need to hot shot a party in within, you know, eight hours because, you know, you're losing a certain amount of money every hour. So sometimes yeah. you have to yeah. talk to somebody and describe it and what I need. Hey, can you come down here? So on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. You talk about being on the phone. I've realized like more and more younger people prefer to just text. 
yeah. and not yeah. talk on the phone. <laughs> yeah. But like in so, it's interesting because in so many jobs, it, it, like nobody necessarily puts on the job description like, hey, you're going to need to get on the phone a lot. But like mm -hmm. being able to talk on the phone, answer the phone well, it's actually like a skill. And that's one yeah. thing yeah. that's like people can practice <laughs> like before you need it for a job. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. truly, you need to have those those soft personal skills. Personal skills. Call them. I mean, mm -hmm. being able to look somebody in the eye when you're talking to them. Exactly. Um, you know, we have, I know we're, I'm an older generation, but the younger generation, a lot of people, they don't look at they you They don't look at eye. you. Right. Because mm. uh, through, through um, like she said, through my speech courses, I was always told eye contact, yeah. yep. eye contact. And I mean, uh, it ain't to be rude, but it really goes a long way with your audience. I mean, small yeah. talk, they call it. I mean, just showing people your undivided attention. I mean, their mm -hmm. undivided attention, you know, it, it just makes them feel better. I mean, yeah. and that's what you need to do in today's business world, I should say. And it's based on what she said, taking some business courses wouldn't hurt. I mean, because you never know, being an engineer, you may want to start your own business one day or do something yeah. related to that. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Okay, so maybe either of you can go first answering this. What's an example of like an interesting challenge that you maybe even have dealt with recently? Okay, I'll go first. Um, currently, uh, we have a new transmission cell here at MTD. I think two or three years ago, they designed it and built it together. And yes, things may be running, but for instance, take this for instance, we may want 3,000 transmissions a day. Well, right now, we may be currently at just have to talk, we may be around four or 500. For, yeah. for me, a big challenge is to, to really, what can I do to this machine? Whether I have to redesign it, you know, what obstacles that's in this way, as well as the same time, we need to make production every day. So that's the other challenge is, yeah, I'm working on it, but I still need to run this machine and try to hit spec of what we can hit from day to day on top of things breaking down day to day. So to me, that's the biggest challenge is, is, is in what I get enjoyment out of, because like I talked to her before, um, or I will talk to you later on is um, when it comes to engineering, why I chose it is, you know, doing something where I'm not, nothing against the job, but being bored every day, I'm actually, it helped. I'm constantly thinking I'm doing something. Yeah. And to me, the enjoyment is feel like I can do something to contribute to something to help the world, you know, possibly, even if it yeah. is just for, lawn, for us, for lawnmowers, people need a lawnmowers. <laughs> so, yeah, sure. Yeah. And Miranda, mm -hmm. I've, I've um, done a good bit of work with leadership development and coaching in manufacturing context. So I have an idea of some of the like interpersonal challenges and stuff that you might, but I'm interested from your perspective, what are some of those interesting people challenges that you're working on right now? Um, well, for example, we have a lean team uh, running this week. That's the CI improvement team. And we have some very large personalities on this team. Um, and, you know, a lot of times I end up having to be kind of like a voice of reason, mm -hmm. the mediator within the team. And, you know, not let it get escalated out of hand, draw the team back down. Like, okay, look, guys, here's what our focus is. Here's the whole purpose yeah. of this team, not to – your way or, or your way it's this is our problem we've got to solve it you know we're not here to to argue yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. so that's some of the challenges that, yeah. that i deal with and i also deal like Montero said we we focus a lot on you know okay our production if we're down if we have any downtime why aren't we having that downtime you yeah. know so i pull a lot of data to try to work with the supervisors and everybody and say okay here's what we got. What can yeah. we do to fix it? Mm -hmm. You know, cause there's yeah. a lot of stuff like we focus more on people and processes where they focus more on like machine and equipment, mm -hmm. but you know, you still have a lot of issues in your processes yes. that you, that may be causing the equipment failures. Right. Sure. So we, we work on improving those. And that's how we work together. You know, yeah. is from doing that week by week, we follow up with each other and help each other out, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. things like that. She give me a heads up. Well, we're a little down here. Okay. I'll make a note of it and try to, you know, have some time to tend to that later on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If we're thinking about, uh, you know, how to advance in your career. So, Mantera, you're you're at the beginning. Miranda, you've been there for a little while, and I, I don't know, Miranda, do you do you have a hand in like recommending people for promotion or promoting people yourself? Um, so from time to time, they will call me in to help interview some of the okay. engineers that are coming in, or they may ask my opinion on particular engineers that are currently yeah. here. Yeah. Um, you know, from that perspective you know, see how, you know, we think they're performing and, and if there's somebody that's performing well, I put in a good word. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I want to promote my fellow, not only my fellow engineers, my fellow employees, mm -hmm. you know, if somebody did, if somebody did me a good turn, I make sure to say, Hey, yeah. you know, Manterio did great today. Yeah. 
Let's give him how, some, some kudos. Yeah. <laughs> and how many people work at the plant? During our full-time basis, of course, this is Corona season. Yeah, right, <laughs> during like right, when we're up and running full-time between 12 and 1500 people. Okay. Okay. Now, what are some of the qualities that stand out that typically help people get promoted at a place like MTD? Here, I would say you need to be very hard working. You need to have a great work ethic. You need to be very professional. Um, you know, you can't come into work saying dirty language or, or acting inappropriate. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have to, you know, get along well with people. I mean, to me, those are, show up, yeah, yeah, show up on time, be yeah. there on time, uh, be willing to jump in when asked. Yes. You know, if, if somebody, if you have a higher up that says, hey, can you work on this project? You should in no way respond, nah, I ain't got time. You should, yeah. <laughs> you should jump in and, you know, yep. be, be a team player and be willing to help. Yeah. It's interesting because a lot of the stuff that you said, and Mentario, maybe you can comment on this. It feels like you don't have to come from any sort of special background to do that stuff. Like it's not really about like you have to be the smartest person in your class or you have to come from a lot of money. It, like anybody can learn to show up on time, to be responsive, to like yes, take sir. initiative and say yes. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. that, it, it feels like that puts a lot of opportunity in front of you. I mean, what do you think about that, Mentario? Uh, absolutely. Um, it's funny you say that. I'm, I'm coming on my senior year. Uh, you know, we kind of have like a one-on-one -on -one talk with some of our professors, you know, before we graduate. And that's the one thing based on what you just said is, um, he says, I know I have a lot of different engineers of all types in here. But what's most important is engineering yeah, it's all about, you know, technical stuff. But the most important thing about engineering is life learning. I mean, you need to be willing to learn, you know, because you're, you're, it's always yeah. technology is growing every day. And you just need to be able to have that, that strive and drive. I know it gets hard some days, believe me, but just keep that drive to, to keep learning. Mm. Mm. Okay. Well, any final words of advice that either of you would give to students who are watching or listening to this? Yes. Um, <laughs> as, you're, as you're going to college, uh, most important thing, enjoy your college years. Because I know I did. I met a lot of my lifelong friends I still have today through college. Um, enjoy it. Choose wisely. Choose oh, wisely. Choose wisely on your in, on your major, and don't feel ashamed if you you start it and you really are not happy with it. Don't feel ashamed to change your major because I know I did. You no, know? yeah. Because what's most important, like I said, is doing something that makes you happy in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, mm -hmm. if you are interested in engineering, you know, one thing I tell all engineering students is your colleges. They most of them are going to have a cooperative education program. Mm -hmm. And you really need to take advantage of that because that's yeah. going to help you know if you're really in the right field. Yeah, um, that's and right. if you find out you are, you're getting paid to do it and it's going on your resume. Yeah. You know, if you find yeah, that's out this point. is for you, like Mantero said, I mean, <laughs> please be passionate about what, yes. what you do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and when you leave work at the end of the day, leave work at work. Yeah. Right. Go home. Mm. Nothing's going to burn you out faster than carrying your work with you wherever right. you go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I there will be hard days. Sure. Do yeah. something you enjoy to where it don't, yeah. like you said, you get burnt out and you want to do something else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much to both of you for being willing to talk to me about your work experience at MTD. This has been super helpful. I appreciate your time. Thank, thank you, you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you.